Okay, well, hi there. My name is David Andalfato. I'm in the research division of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis here at the 40th annual St. Louis Fall Policy Conference, and I'm very happy to be joined by Aisha Imrahorolu. I, I apologize if I've not pronounced that exactly correctly. Uh, Aisha is here to speak on a paper that she and her co-author Kai Zhao have written. Uh, the title of the paper is The Chinese Saving Rate Productivity, Old Age Support, and Demographics. Thank you very much for being here, Aisha. Thank you, David. I thought I'd begin by just asking, you know, first of all, like how do, how do macroeconomists define the savings rate, and, and why, why is it important for us to study it? Okay, so, um, I mean, I would start at the individual level, actually, to define a saving rate. So for, for, for a person or for a household, it's just um, whatever you don't consume. So you have your income, you subtract your consumption, the leftover is your saving. So then we can look at your saving as a function of your income and get the saving rate. So that would be money you put aside for, for the future, for uh, emergencies, whatever, you put it in a bank, that would be your savings. For the country as a whole, it's going to be not just the individuals, but it's also going to be the government, the corporations, who will be behaving in a similar way. So when we look for the macro aggregates, we would be taking the, the total income in the economy, which is GDP, subtracting total consumption and total government expenditures from it to find the savings that, that the whole country does. And um, why is it important? Because the money you put aside uh, is available for uh, firms to then uh, borrow to invest. So, so if individuals are saving the money in a bank, let's say the firms will borrow from that money. They buy capital goods, they um, build factories, buy machines, whatever, and that increases the future output in the economy. So the more money that's available for firms to invest, uh, or it will become cheaper for them to invest, the more they will invest. So people believe that there's a relationship between, say, how much people save and the growth rate of an economy, because there will be more funds to increase the capital stock. Okay, very good. So, and, and your paper's all about China. Yes. You, you mentioned that the national saving rate in China has more than doubled since 1980. <clears throat> Um, so just to get, can you give us a flavor of uh, how, uh, at what, what is the saving rate in China and say how does it compare to other countries like the United States? So uh, this particular measure of the saving rate we use is called net national saving rate. Uh, it went up from 20% in 1980s to 40% to, to, uh, pretty much in 2010. U.S. probably in that measure is about 6%. 6%. You know, so there's a huge difference <laughs> mm -hmm. between, um, between these saving rates. Uh, and, I mean, it's, so I'm from Turkey. The saving rates in Turkey is also very, very low. And often you would see newspaper articles that would say, if only we could save like the Chinese. You know, then everything would be great. We would grow much faster. And um, people always blame each other, like, we don't save like the Chinese. Uh, so there's always this impression that high saving rates are really good and desirable, and somehow we are being very bad not doing it. Same thing happens in, 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 in the U.S. People have been, especially before this Great Recession, there were many articles saying, you know, why are Americans not saving? There were household saving rates that were negative even. So it's kind of puzzling why some countries save a lot, some countries don't save a lot. And Lots of explanations exist. Right. So, so the paper is about China, but I'm wondering, um, is, is the pattern of economic development for China, and in particular with respect to the saving rate, is it very much different than the pattern that we've witnessed in the past with other uh, developing economies or emerging economies? Is your paper really just about China, or can it be more applied to emerging economies in general? So um, the same framework can be applied to mm -hmm. other economies. In fact, my first paper on savings was on the Japanese saving rate, mm -hmm. which showed a very different pattern. So what happened in Japan was in the 50s and 60s, they had a very high saving rate. So, but it's very high. It was maybe like 25% with, uh, with this measure. And then it went down to 5 6%. So then the puzzling thing about Japan at that point was why it was so high initially and why it went down. For China, it's the opposite. It's like it was low and then it went up. I'm also looking at Latin America. I have a paper on uh, Chile and Mexico that th their pattern is that it's very low overall compared to China, very, very low. Um, 
So the same framework can be used to understand other countries as well. Okay, yes. so let's get to China then. Let's get to yes. your paper. So the, the main question seems to be to understand what drove, what drives the high uh, national saving rate in China and what caused it to double since 1980. Uh, how do you go about uh, addressing this question? So um, what we noticed, and everybody knows this, in China, um, there are a uh, few important things about China, I think, that might make it unique. Um, one thing they did in 1980, they implemented this one-child policy. So what that means, especially for a country like China, where children actually traditionally have been taking care of their parents a lot, that means that after 1980, in like 20 years, you're going to have many, many families with um, one child. So suppose two adult children get married, they're going to have four elderly parents to take care of. Mm -hmm. So that's going to make it quite difficult. Um, another unique thing about China is that um, there is no um, government-provided uh, long-term care risk. So, for example, we have Medicare here, we have Medicaid, you know, for the poor, who if they face um, long-term health risks, you know, we have government-provided policies that take care of them. So in China, no such thing exists. So what the elderly do or used to do is that they would rely on their children. They would live with their children or one of the uh, adult children will take care of a, a sick parent. So um, this isn't going to be able to happen. Right? After basically 2000, you know, 20 years after one child policy has passed, you're going to have more and more families who cannot depend on their children. So it's really easy to imagine that they're going to save for old age. So for that, we built a model that has um, dynastic uh, families. So in these models, parents and children maximize a joint utility function. So we don't have to say this is how much they care about their children, this is how much children care about their parents. They care as much as they care for themselves, right? they like equal. So I, I actually like those models a lot. What happens in those models is if the children are poor, the parents will give them money. They pay for education, you know, they take care of them. If the parents are poor or are needy, then the children take care of them. So in a model like this, if you uh, introduce one-child policy, very naturally you get this jump in savings that we see in the data. So we have a graph. I wish we could show graphs here. <laughs> you know, we could show it to your audience. But the graph starts from 1980, goes to 2013, and then you see the swiggling going up, uh, the saving rate going up. Right. We drew the model, uh, and I mean, we were actually quite surprised how similar the saving rates look. Okay. Um, how much, of, uh, how much of that rise in the saving rate, uh, uh, I presume your model provides an estimate of how much of the rise in the saving rate is attributable just to this, say, one child, yes, one family policy? Yes, it does, it does. Uh, so before I tell you that number, uh, let me also say that there are other things that uh -huh. increase the saving rate. So there is um, shocks to productivity, which make uh, capital more productive, and then people save more because they have more uh, returns that they would be getting. There is social security, mm -hmm. which is not sufficient, so they save for that. And lastly, we also introduced, today in the presentation I'll be showing, we also introduced individual income risk into this model. So at the end, we can do a re decomposition. You know, we can say how much does long-term care risk matter, how much does uh, productivity matter, how much does social security matter. And um, currently, with the numbers we have, long-term care risk matters like for 40%. But I actually don't want to, you know, I know in, typically we do these decompositions and, and you know, talk about these numbers. But I, I'm, I'm trying to be a bit more careful about this because I hate to say that I've calibrated to the, Jap uh, to the Chinese economy. You know, it's such a, such a big economy with so many things going on, and so many numbers are not terribly reliable. Uh, so even Pan World Tables comes up with GDP numbers that are different than what the government is announcing. So um, what I want to say at the end of this paper is that with these four elements, you get something that looks so much like the reality that you never will think this is puzzling. Right. So uh, 
we're happy to just say, well, the effects are likely large. Yes. Uh, without actually yes. pinning a specific number yes. on it. Sure, for sure. Um, I think, uh, would one, one lesson be, you know, when, when people uh, see China's high savings rate, you know, like you, you mentioned your own home country, uh, it often evokes kind of an envy, if only we could be. Yeah. But indeed, from what you've just been telling me, these, these high savings rate might be symptomatic of some some problems in the Chinese economy, a lack of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, old age security program right. or something like that, or some restrictive uh, uh, policy on family structure. Um, right. to, to, to what extent do you think that's true, that uh, we should be not so envious of these high savings I mean, rates? totally true. So mm -hmm. in case of Turkey, you know, fertility rate is so high mm -hmm. that people have like three children mm -hmm. compared to one, and they do rely on children's support. So you know, it wouldn't be a very good policy implication to say, oh, okay, you know, have fewer children, you'll have higher savings. Right. <laughs> you know, right. what, what purpose does that serve? Uh, yeah, I think one has to really think deeply about why a country is saving a lot. Right. Although an envious part, uh, a part of the high savings in China is coming from high productivity. That part, yes. That is an important positive thing. High productivity growth or high productivity? T total factor productivity huh. is high. So growth rate of total factor productivity so is high. So forgive me, don't, don't, don't people usually want to borrow against higher uh, future productivity, they not do. save? They do, okay. that's true. But if it's temporary, uh -huh. right, and that they usually are. Okay. So those are the better times that you would uh, both invest and save. All right. So in our model, saving and investment are equal to ah, each other. So I was going to bring up that question, actually. I did notice that. And uh, so yeah. technically, you, your, your theoretical framework in which you're addressing this question is, is a closed economy. Yes. Yes. And of course, we know, uh, in fact, China is not a closed economy. Yes. It was running yes. large, large uh, trade balance surpluses. Yes. That might affect perhaps some of the quantitative? Uh, I don't think so, actually, no. because if you look at the graph, yeah. both investment and saving are going up in yeah. China. So it's not like uh, they're behaving differently. Okay. I mean, it's a puzzle that saving is greater than investment, uh -huh. and that's the part that's creating the, the surpluses, uh -huh. and that will have, you know, its own explanations, I'm sure. But what we're after is trying to understand why both of them are going up. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're more after. So I don't think the... Answers will change. I think there will be additional answers to, or factors to why one is higher than the other all throughout this time. Right. Very good. Uh, one last thing. Um, in terms of, say, policy implications, I mean, if you were invited to China, perhaps, and, 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 and invited to speak on certain policy reforms, uh, would you have any uh, lessons to draw from this work or your other work, uh, not only for China, but perhaps even other economies? Anything you'd like to stress? Well, I think China is trying to implement uh, government-provided long-term health um, care. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think it is important for them to do that. I mean, it's clear that uh, it's not a very efficient uh, or, uh, I don't know about efficiency perhaps, but you know, people do need that kind of insurance. It's a big risk. And uh, I mean, there are stories, anecdotal stories that some Chinese elderly commit suicide because mm -hmm. they don't wanna rely on their kids and, and mm -hmm. ruin their lives. I mean, healthcare risks are really important risks and providing insurance for that is, is an important role of the government, I think. Thank you very much, Aisha. So just to conclude, I was wondering if you wouldn't uh, mind providing, what, what are the one or two takeaways from the work that you're doing here? Um, I would say that what I learned from the collective research on savings actually is that it's not terribly puzzling to understand saving rates. Uh, people have come up with many, many different explanations like uh, culture, for example, shows up mm -hmm. a lot. You know, Chinese save a lot because they're very patient. I don't think you need that, those things to understand the Chinese saving rate. So that was the most in interesting part to me personally. Very good. Thank you very much. Welcome.